in this video, we are going to cover the quickest and best ways to create running totals in Excel. Starting with this first example, I have a range of data going over different months. And the quickest way that you can create a running total in Excel is to select the range of values and use the quick analysis icon. From here, we can get to totals and then scrolling across to the right, we can find our column totals and our running total. And in just a few clicks of a button, we have running totals. Did you know about that button? That is your quickest way. Now it does produce the values in bold, so I'm going to select them and turn that off. Not my preference. And we can see the formula in the bar is the kind of thing you're probably expecting if you've done a running total before. It uses a sum function on an anchored starting reference, an absolute B2 reference, and then a relative one so that as I click on the other cells, you can see it rolling and expanding with the range. Now this is great, it's fast, and if your data will not update in terms of the size of rows, this is perfect. But if I add a new row at the bottom for October 24 and enter a value in there, you'll see that there's no expansion and I will need to do that myself. So I'm going to look at deleting that row and let's look at a superior method. Now, when we need a dynamic running total formula that auto updates when rows are added, the best approach nowadays is to use a function called scan. Now, if I go in and write this scan function, so this function will perform a calculation for each value, each row, returning that intermediate value. Perfect when you're creating something like a running total and you don't want the complete aggregation you want every result leading to that point. Now it asks for an initial value, which can be zero for us right now, a comma, and I can select an array. And for this first example, I'll select the fixed range of B2 to B10, and then putting in a comma again, will ask for a Lambda function. Now we're not going to go into detail on how this works right now. Talking about Lambdas is for another day. But I'm going to provide a couple of parameters, which I'll just call A and B. I don't normally like using vague names like that. But in a simple example, such as the accumulated value and the current value, a simple one like this, it maybe suffices. A plus B will be the calculation to perform. And if I close off the lambda and the scan function, this will spill for all the results. So this is really cool because it's a single formula, not nine different formulas. But at the moment, we're still suffering the same issue in respect that if a new month was to come in for October 24, and if I put in the 2000 again, I still do not get that expansion. So how can we deal with that? Well, I could expand my range, couldn't I? I could expand that maybe to row 15. We can enter any row number we want there. And then it would expand and include everything up to that point. But I don't want all these results, all this spill up to row 15, if I'm not using it yet. So the ideal answer right now is to go back to my scan function and before the reference to B15, or whatever that final row may be for you, we can put in the period icon, which is the trim reference operator. And now press and enter, it will trim off any unused values, any blank cells. So now I still have my reference to B15, but that trim reference operator, making sure it only uses the used cells. And this is an ideal formula for us because it's a single formula, it's dynamic, it's consistent, the same formula for each row, and it's robust. Typical Excel mistakes, 
such as somebody typing a value over a cell will now be alerted by this spill error and it's much easier to recognize those classic Excel issues as opposed to if they were individual formulas. Now, both of these approaches would work with horizontal data as well. If I selected the range of values in a quick analysis, the first lot of calculations with the blue on the icon are your row equivalent of what we looked at. And scan function will happily work across columns as well. Here I've got a reference to C3 to S3, but that trim reference operator in there and the scan function playing its role. Now, one of the reasons we used the scan function is to create a dynamic formula that would adjust when new columns or new rows are added. But if we're working with a table, we are already working with a naturally dynamic structure. So we don't need to worry about that. Now, in a table, we really do not want to be using that quick analysis button. And when we write a formula such as a sum function, we have to bear in mind when we click on cell B2 that we're no longer getting that range reference. We're now dealing with structured references. So the concept of referring to the cell before the current one or all values up to the current one is much more awkward to create. It goes against the natural behavior of how tables work. So we need to get a little bit creative with this. Now at the moment, that reference to the total cell, the at symbol represents the word this. That means it's this total. So when we think about the sum function that we wrote before with the range, that would be perfect for the second half of the reference. But for the first reference, the anchored side, we need to somehow anchor it to the first value of this total column. Now, one way we can do that is if I take out the at symbol, it references all of the values in the total column. I don't want all of the values. So we need a way that we can pick up just the first value. And there are different ways of doing this, such as the index function, for example, personal favorite of mine. But in the previous video at this channel, we spoke about the take function. And that would also be great for this task. I can ask the take function to take the first row's value from that column. So just take whatever's in row one, and then after that take function, use the colon, the range operator, as I look to build a range, then click on the cell in this row, this total, and this would create that dynamic range from the first value through to the current value, whatever that may be, B3, B4, B5, B6, and so on. Running this formula, we now have a running total while using structured references in a table. If I go to add a new month at the bottom to show the dynamic nature of this, there's the table expanding already. I love tables. And if I enter 3000, there is the run in total. Consistent formula for the whole column and it's dynamic. Now, finally, those examples, those formula examples were working with data that was already grouped at a month level. But if you're dealing with data like this, where I've got much more granularity at a transactional level, but you may want those monthly running totals, or it could be weekly or some other period. Now there's a few techniques for this, but the ideal one is going to be a pivot table. It'll be much simpler, and the concept of this video is to look at fast and dynamic results. And this will tick both of those boxes. So if I click on insert pivot table, and I'm gonna ask it for a pivot table using this table data. And I'm gonna put it on my pivot table worksheet that I've got ready for this. In here, I could drag the order date column into my rows area. 
You can use columns if you prefer. That's going to naturally perform some grouping. And I'm going to get rid of the groups or the fields that I have no interest in. From here, I can put total in the values area, which will generate a natural sum of totals. I can then right mouse click one of those values, go to show values as, and in here we have running total. I will choose months. In fact, it is my only option and click OK. And here are our running totals now done in a pivot table. We can format those values and perform any other improvements we want. But the focus point of this video is fast, dynamic, and the best way of creating running totals in Excel. So I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please hit that thumbs up. Let me know in the comments what your favorite method was. Did you learn anything in this video? And if you did, why not subscribe so that you will receive the latest videos from this channel. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again soon.